Hello! In this tutorial, we'll cover how to set up, light, and render an interior night scene using V-Ray for 3ds Max. We'll walk you through setting up an environment using either a simple color or Chaos Cosmos HDRI assets. Next, we'll delve into how we can simulate moonlighting using V-Ray Sky. We'll then introduce various types of artificial lights. Additionally, we'll explore the workflows baked into the scene and see how to post-process the final image using the VFB light mix and color correction options. Currently, I have the interior underscore lighting underscore night scene open, which you can download using the link provided in this tutorial's description. This scene consists of a simple living room furnished with several items. To speed up our workflow within the scene, various V-Ray lights have been pre-positioned, each with its default lighting properties. Our primary light source is a dome light, which we'll use to light up the night sky. The V-Ray sunlight will serve to mimic the moon's glow. Our main lighting comprises some instant sphere lights attached to a pendant, an IES light designated for the floor lamp, and a plane light, which provides fill lighting, replicating illumination from an adjacent room or space. To begin, let's configure the rendering settings. Open the Render Setup window and select your desired resolution. Note that you can set a higher resolution now and later downscale it using the VFB. A common technique to adjust the lighting is the Material Override option. This method temporarily replaces all materials with a single default V-Ray material. Upon clicking the button, we can see some options to determine which material properties to retain. For this scenario, we aim to preserve both reflections and refractions. Subsequently, we'll add render elements that will be used during the post-production stage. Using Interactive Production Rendering, or IPR, for short, requires a switch to a faster AI denoiser, which can be either CPU or GPU based. Lastly, increase the post effects rate for faster update of effects such as lens flares, sharpening, blurring, and denoising. Start the IPR rendering. Within the VFB window, there's a convenient feature called Test Resolution. Let's reduce this to 50%. Managing light properties is very easy using the Light Lister. Select the Dome Light option. This will serve our sky illumination. For a basic night sky simulation, choose a bluish hue. Our next step involves integrating a technique called image-based lighting. This utilizes a 360-degree high dynamic range image as a replacement for a basic color. Drawing from photos, this method ensures a more realistic night sky illumination that has diverse colors and intensities. To access an HDRI library, launch Chaos Cosmos, our 3D content library that contains high-quality models, materials, and HDRI files. Go to the HDRIs category and select Evening Sky. Upon downloading an HDRI, a tick symbol emerges, indicating readiness for import via the Import to File button. It's important to mention, if a dome light is active during this process, the downloaded HDRI will be assigned to it. If not, a new dome light will be created using the chosen HDRI. If you haven't downloaded the image, go ahead and do it now. Next, let's light our scene using some HDRIs. Try different night skies until you find one you like. Open the Material Editor and pull in the HDRI image you chose. Spin it around until it looks right to you. The room's light looks good, but outside, too bright. To fix this, turn off the dome light visibility so it doesn't affect the outside. Now open the Environment and Effects window and pull in the HDRI image again. With the VFB window, you can now tweak how bright the outside and the room light are separately. You can keep the angle of the HDRI the same while doing this. Once you're happy, save this as a checkpoint in the VFB history. This tool lets you compare different lighting setups you've tried. Turn on the sun, but we're going to use it as moonlight. If it's too bright, turn it down a bit. Want softer shadows? Make the sun bigger. Change the sun's color to override mode and pick a bluish shade. But remember, if you turn on the sun after starting the render, it won't show up in the light mix. 
save your current setup in the VFB history, turn off the IPR rendering. Using the light lister, turn on all your light groups. Now start the IPR again. All the lights you turned on should be in the light mix list. Turn off the IES and fill lights in the light mix. Let's adjust the pendant lights. Select them and make them brighter. Do this using the light's own settings, not the light mix, because using the light mix can cause artifacts. It multiplies the brightness, and we don't want to go overboard. Sometimes, making changes like this can cause weird effects, but we'll fix those later. Make sure all lights are visible. Save your setup in the VFB history again. Then, stop the IPR. In the render settings, turn off the material override. Show all objects that were hidden at first. Turn on the IPR again. Now, adjust the light colors and brightness. Next, we'll play with the VFB light mix. Starting with the dome light, if you hold the Alt key and click, you can focus just on that light. Adjust its color. Do the same with the pendant light and adjust its brightness. Next, adjust the color by using temperature settings in Kelvins. Then, move on to the fill light and fine tune its color. To focus the light on a specific area, use the directional setting. It's like using barn doors in photography. Adjust its direction and brightness until you like how it looks. Now, make sure all your lights are turned on. Everything should look good at this point. Let's play with some camera effects. Turn on lens effects and adjust their size and strength. Want a streaky look? Turn on the lens scratch effect and rotate it until it's horizontal. You can also adjust its transparency for more control. Stop the IPR because now we're gearing up for the final render. Switch from the AAI denoiser to V-Ray's default one, it's more accurate for this job. Open your camera settings. Choose the V-Ray physical camera and turn on the depth of field effect. Adjust the final image quality and the test resolution settings. Save this setup in the VFB history for reference. Now, run the V-Ray production render. Once done, save all your color and lighting tweaks from the VFB into one file. Or if you prefer, save just the light mix setups in separate files. These won't have color adjustments. With the rendered image, you can try out different lighting and color styles, then save each one. This way, from one render, you get many style options. In this video, you've learned to light a nighttime indoor scene using V-Ray. We've covered image-based lighting, setting up the sun in V-Ray, and using artificial lights. For more tutorials like this, check out our channel. Hope this helped you out. Remember to subscribe so you don't miss out on our upcoming content. Thanks for tuning in.